Computational thinking gets used so often and in so many different situations that it can feel meaningless and trendy. But the idea at the heart of the phrase is game changing. Originally, the term computational thinking was coined to describe a set of problem solving strategies that are useful when translating real world problems into something that can be modeled or solved using a computer. As it turns out, those strategies make it easier to solve all kinds of problems. The most common computational thinking tools, often called the pillars of computational thinking, include decomposition, pattern recognition and pattern matching, abstraction, and algorithms. These days, the definition of computational thinking has expanded to include standards and thought processes. But the four main pillars are still the most widely used and simple to explain. So let's look at each one more carefully. Decomposition is when you break big problems into smaller, more manageable pieces. You can find decomposition almost everywhere, from instructions of a board game to a class syllabus. Breaking problems down into their most simple components will go a long way toward putting everything in perspective and making your next steps feel more obvious and manageable. Next is pattern recognition and pattern matching. It's very rare for a problem to be unlike anything that's been seen before. Usually, small components of a big question either end up being similar to one another or similar to small components of another question. In order for this to be helpful, you need to learn how to spot similarities. When two problems are similar, it generally means that the solution for one will help you find a solution to the other. Sometimes when you find two similar ideas, they also have some obvious differences but that doesn't make the match useless. Take as an example, the need to make lemonade and grapefruit juice. In both cases, you take the fruit, cut it in half, squeeze the juice of the fruit into a container, then add some sugar and stir. The similarities are so strong that the differences in the type of fruit seem pretty unimportant. We could make a recipe for either by just generalizing out the kind of fruit and saving that detail for later. That is called abstraction. And that's another vital part of computational thinking. Finally, we have algorithms. The term algorithm might sound like a formal fancy math word, but really it's just a list of instructions that explain how to complete a task. That could be something as simple as items for a babysitter or as complex as the explanation of how to find the shortest distance between any two houses in a city. Each of the pillars of computational thinking is powerful on its own, but once students learn how to master them all together, their ability to solve problems will skyrocket. Pair those with a powerful machine and intelligent software and there is virtually no end to what students can do.